Our topic for derivatives number four is differentiability. And we're going to talk about what renders a function differentiable or not differentiable. So first, in order to call a function differentiable, we must have a derivative existing at every point in its domain. So at every point in the domain, you have to be able to draw a tangent line and be able to find its slope. Characteristic number two is our functions must be continuous. If our function is not continuous, then it can't be differentiable. And over here in this shaded box, I have an important idea. If you are told that a function is differentiable, then you can imply that it also must be continuous because that continuity piece must happen first before we can claim the function to be differentiable. The next characteristic says that we want our function to have smooth curves. So we want it to be smooth like this. There are no abrupt changes. So what we're looking for is a smooth transition in those slopes. And that's what I mean by this statement down here. We want our left-hand derivative to equal our right-hand derivative. So as I'm doing tangent line slopes from the left, they need to blend in to the tangent line slopes on the right. So I want no abrupt changes in slope, and that will show up as a corner point or a cusp in the graph, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Our last characteristic is what's called locally linear, and what that means is if I take a graph and I zoom way in, it needs to take a linear look to it. And we will have to look at these in class, but if I looked at this absolute value graph on the calculator, what I would see is a sharp point. It would be an abrupt change in slope. I would be going from a slope of negative one to a slope of one in an instant. And I don't have that gradual change, that gradual transition from one slope to the next. And it doesn't matter how far in I zoom on that corner point, it is gonna stay a corner point, which means this function is not differentiable because of what's happening right here. If I were to look at this square root function over here, initially it would look a lot like that absolute value function. So I would look at it and it would kind of have that look to it. But if I were to pull in that window and take in a closer look, if I were just to zoom in on that area, what you would see happening is that point would start to soften out like this. And then as I close in on that window and take a closer look, it softens out even more and it starts to look like this. And the further in I zoom, eventually what it looks like is a straight line. So it is going from what looks like a corner point to a straight line. And what I'm able to accomplish with this square root function cannot be done with that absolute value function. In this next section, we talk about three cases of non-differentiability. So these will be things that render a function not differentiable. Number one on that list is its continuity. So number one, if a function is not continuous, automatically it will be not differentiable. And that discontinuity can happen in any variety. And we had talked about these types previously. A removable continuity means I am taking a point and I am removing it from the function and it can be relocated elsewhere and that generated a whole. So this function is not continuous and therefore not differentiable. Or your discontinuity might be non-removable. And this is the case of a jump where your function literally stops at a value and jumps to another value before continuing on. Another case of non-differentiability is a vertical tangent. And I just pulled up a sample function that has one this cube root of x. And if you trace along this curve, this is the graph of the cube root of x, right here, we hit a place where the tangent line is actually going vertically. And you know that the slope, 
of a vertical line. So the slope of that vertical line is going to be undefined. So if we're saying that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line and my slope is undefined, my derivative is also undefined. So places on your graph that have a vertical tangent line that appear to go vertical are not differentiable. They are continuous or can be continuous as you see here, but not differentiable. So continuous, but not differentiable. And our third case is where we have a sharp point. And that could be either a corner, and that's what's happening with our absolute value function on this one, or it might be what's called a cusp. And a cusp is what's happening over in this function over here. And I wouldn't get too hung up on the difference between the two. They both result in a sharp point that you see in either one of these. And if you look, what's happening is there's not a smooth transition of the slopes. As I look at the slopes coming into that sharp point from the left over here in the absolute value, they are negative one, and it's a constant negative one. And at that moment, they transition immediately to a positive one. So I don't hit all of those in between values between negative one and one. There's just an abrupt change in slope and it results in this corner point. If you look at our y equals x to the 2 thirds power that we have graphed over here, if you look at the slopes coming in from the left side of that corner point, so as I draw these slopes, what I see is they are becoming more and more negative and steeper and they are approaching a negative infinity the closer I get to that point. So my slopes are approaching a negative infinity. However, when I approach from the right side and I look at the slopes coming in from the right, they are getting steeper, but in a positive direction. So they're approaching positive infinity. And since there's not a smooth transition between negative infinity and positive infinity, it results in that cusp that I see right here. And it makes this function not differentiable because of what's going on right here. Both of these functions, however, are continuous, just not differentiable. And my reason is because my left-hand derivative is not equal to my right-hand derivative. So how are you gonna use all of this knowledge? Let's take a look at some examples on the back. This, these first four questions are looking at this graph and you have to say continuous, differentiable, both, or neither at each of the following points. You might wanna pause and give this a go. On my number one example at x equals negative one, which is right here, as I trace along the function, I see that this is continuous, but because of the corner point, it is not differentiable. So I'm just gonna say continuous only. On question number two, you were asked at x equals one, and at x equals one, right here I see I jump, which means this function is not continuous and therefore not differentiable, so we're gonna say neither for that one. On question number three, I'm checking out x equals two, and as I trace along this function at x equals two, it is continuous, there is a nice smooth curve going on right there. So we are both continuous and differentiable. So we say both. And the last one at x equals three, I can see at x equals three, once again, I am continuous, but because of this cusp, this corner, I say it's not differentiable. So continuous only. Question number five should look a little familiar because we had done something similar when we did continuity. And so because this function is differentiable, I know it must be continuous. So I'm actually gonna start doing exactly how we approached those continuity problems. And with a piecewise, that was to ensure that the same value from the left equals the same limit value from the right. So this is focusing on the continuity that I need to ensure. So as X is approaching one from the left, is this function as x is approaching one from the right, I use this piece of my piecewise. From here, I am just gonna do direct substitution and plug this one in for each one of these. 
And when I do that, I get kind of stuck because I end up with this equation that says 3a equals 6 plus b, and I have two variables going on and only one equation. So I need to do something else. But if you think about it, all I did so far is I've played on the continuity of the function. That's what this was about. But if I'm trying to make it differentiable, I have to do the differentiability piece. So the first thing I'm going to do is find what my f prime is. And when you're doing the derivative of a piecewise, you just do the derivative of each piece. So what I need to do with this is ensure that my slope is I'm coming from the left of 1, transitions smoothly into the slope as I'm coming from the right side of 1. So what I did over here with the original function, I'm going to do a similar thing over here with the derivative of that function. So the limit as x approaches 1 from the left is the 6ax, as I approach 1 from the right is 6. So I'm going to ensure that my slope coming from the left blends nice and smoothly into the slope coming from the right. And so now I just evaluate this limit. And I get an a value of 1. And now I can go back to where I got stuck over here. And I can substitute that 1 in for the a. And once I do that, I'm able to continue this equation solving, and I get a b value of negative 3. For example, number 6, part a is same old, same old about continuity, so you got to run yourself through those three parts of that definition. And running through these three steps, f of 1 is 5, my left-hand limit. Um, again, notice the notation. I chose to write 2x squared plus 3. Here, my right-hand limit, 4x plus 1, instead of just generically calling it f of x, I found that those two match. Therefore, the general limit is 5. And then the true heart of continuities in this step 3, the limit as x approaches 5, is the value when I get to 5. Therefore, f is continuous at my value x equals 1. To see if f is differentiable at x equals 1, I first of all had to verify that continuity piece. If it so happened that this function was not continuous at x equals 1, then I wouldn't have to do part b because I would know right away I would say that answer is no. But because this function is continuous, I'm going to investigate further about this differentiability part. So the first thing I have to do is find the derivative of my piecewise function. And again, I do that by just doing the derivative of each one of these pieces, and it gives me my derivative piecewise function. And now I'm just going to dwell on step number two of continuity. So I need to ensure that the limit as I approach one from the left and the limit as I approach one from the right are equal. And if the limit as x approaches one from the left and the right are the same, that means that I'm going to make it that smooth transition of slope. Therefore, this function is also differentiable at x equals 1. The written part of your assignment for derivatives number 4 is going to look like number 6 right here. And go through all of these steps. So for continuity, this is a nice review of what we did previously. So go through those three steps of continuity. If you happen to say your function is not continuous, that makes your work in the next part super simple because you just say f is not differentiable because it is not continuous. If you make it through that continuity part, then you just go through the differentiability piece like we did right here. Find the derivative and basically do step two of continuity, but do it with that derivative function.